What's up everyone, welcome back, Patrick here. And in this next video, what we're gonna talk about is how does a bid ask spread work? How is it a uh, transaction cost? And to explain this, what I'm gonna do, present a simple scenario. Let's say that you want to buy a stock for $10. So we'll call you investor one. And so you're the buyer. You want to buy a certain stock for $10. And let's say there's another investor in the market, we'll call them investor two. And they're holding the stock right now and they wanna sell it to you at $10. Now you also have to make sure that the buyer and the seller, they wanna transact with the same number of shares but to keep things simple for this video, let's just pretend we're dealing with one share. So you wanna buy one share for $10, this seller is willing to sell that stock, that same stock for $10, one share of it. Now, in a perfect world, what would happen is you, investor one, would be able to find investor two fairly quickly and the transaction would be seamless. So you'd buy it for 10, they sell it to you for 10 at that agreed upon price. However, in the real world, it would be fairly difficult for you to find this investor. Let's say they're on the other side of the world. Let's say they're in a different time zone, all these different variables, so it can be a headache. So what actually happens is there's an intermediary, sort of a middleman, quote unquote, that helps this transaction, that helps match both investors. And what this intermediary is called is a market maker. They help in facilitating this transaction. So they provide liquidity in the market. And it's usually a large bank or a brokerage. And what actually happens, they don't actually match you two. What happens is they buy the stock from this seller over here. And they give this seller money. So they actually buy the stock from the seller. So there's this transaction that happens. And then what happens is they're holding this stock and then they go and find you who wants to buy it. So then they sell you that stock. And then you give them your money. Like that. Right? So they do the finding pretty much for you. So, Obviously, they're not going to do this for free. They're not going to provide this service for free, right? They're not just going to buy the stock for $10 from the seller and then sell it to you for $10. There wouldn't be any cut that they're taking. So the way that they take their cut for providing this service, for making, for providing the liquidity, for providing the seamless experience for both investors is they buy the stock from the seller at something called the bid price. And I'm gonna to explain to you what that is in a sec. And they sell the stock to this investor at something called an ask price. So they don't buy it for 10 and then sell it for 10. Both of these prices are different, right? This is a bid price, this is an ask price. And so before we get into talking about how those prices relate to the $10, so basically any buyer of a stock, buyers always buy, or let's say just investors. Investors always buy at the ask price. 
And then on this side, if an investor is selling a stock, if you're holding a stock and you want to sell it, investors always sell at the bid price. So if you have a trading account and you want to go buy a stock, you're going to notice that when you buy it, you're always going to buy it at the ask price. Or if you're holding a stock, you want to sell it, uh, you're going to sell it at the bid price. And so the reason why it's different prices here is so this market maker can get compensated for this service because a lot of time they're taking risks too. They are buying this stock and then sometimes they're holding it for a period of time. And so then they can get exposed to price fluctuations. So let's forget about the bid price. Let's say they bought this stock from this investor at $10. But then let's say five minutes later, they still haven't found a buyer here. And let's say the stock just drops to like 980. And then they sell it at 980. So they bought it at 10, sell it at 980. Notice they lost 20 cents there. Right? So they're taking on risk and holding this stock. And so what they do is they buy the stock at something called the bid price, which is always, if we had this $10 here, the bid price is always going to be a little less than that agreed upon price. So they'll, let's say it's five cents less, $9.95. So this is the bid price. So let's say they're buying the stock at the bid price from this investor for $9.95. Right, so the seller wanted to sell it for 10, but they're not always going to sell it at that market price. Let's say this is the market price here. It's always going to be a little less than the market price. So the market maker buys at the bid price for $9.95 and then sells it to this investor, not at the market price of 10, but a little higher than it. Let's say five cents higher in this case at $10.05. So this is the ask price. So the ask price is always greater than the bid price. So the market maker, they bought it at $9.95 and then they sold it at $10.05. And so notice that they made 10 cents on that transaction. And this here is basically the, it's called the bid ask spread. It's the difference between the ask price and the bid price. The ask price, remember, it's always gonna be greater than the bid price. So the bid ask spread in this case, is 10 cents, right? So you bought it at a price higher than the market price, the seller sold it at a price lower than the market price. And so the spread, that spread, the market maker collected 10 cents, and basically that's the transaction cost right there. So that goes to the market maker for providing that service, for compensating them on taking that risk and making the transaction fairly smooth for both parties. Now, this bid ask spread here, it actually depends on a lot of factors. Actually, over time, what's happened is um, the bid ask spread is tightening up. So it's getting tighter and tighter because technology is getting better. So earlier, like maybe 50 years ago, there was something called open outcry. You want to look that up basically it's when you see people shouting on an exchange prices at each other those older videos and those are pretty much market makers shouting bid and ask prices to each other trying to transact and so during that time because these market makers because it was so manual of a job these bid ask spreads were higher because the market makers were holding these stocks for longer periods of time. So they were taking on more risk, right? So they wanted to widen this up because the longer they're holding it, the more risk they're taking, the more they're exposed to price fluctuations. But if they widen this spread, so let's say like, uh, instead of 10.05, let's say it's like 10.40 over here. And then let's say the bid price is 960. Right? If they buy it at this bid price of 960, they have a lot more room, buffer room to work with. 
right? Even if they have to hold the stock for a longer period of time because that bid ask or that, uh, first off, yeah, the bid ask spread is a lot wider. It's 80 cents in this case, but that bid price that they bought it for is a lot lower than that market price. So the bid ask spread was higher, uh, more wider when there was less technology, when it was open outcry. And then what happened came telephones. And that started, that new technology started to decrease the time that the market maker had to hold the stock. So not as much risk for them. So they tighten up the bid ask spread a little bit more. Then came electronic trading systems, which decreased the time even more. They had to hold the stock before finding a buyer. So with more and more technology, and then in the future, who knows, maybe this bid ask spread in the future won't even exist, right? So it'll just be the market prices. You'll buy it at $10, someone will sell it to you at $10. Maybe there's gonna be technology that just connects you to instantly. But for now, there still is that bid ask spread. If you have a trading account, you'll see it. So that's number one. So over time with technology, the bid ask spread is getting tighter and tighter. But there's also other factors. So trading volume is another one. So if a stock has a higher trading volume, it's more of a popular company. So for example, like Apple, then that bid ask spread is going to be a lot tighter than a less traded company with lower volume. Because if it's a popular stock that's getting traded a lot in a day, then that market maker, again, it's, they're not gonna be holding that stock for too long. It's, this transit, this part here, it's gonna be almost instant. They're gonna buy it and then they're gonna be able to sell it, right, fairly quickly. So they're not gonna be exposed to as many price fluctuations. And so they're willing to tighten up that bid ask spread. And because it's higher volume, they're gonna still get compensated even if that bid ask spread is lower, right, because of that higher volume but let's say it's not it's a smaller company it's not as frequently traded in the market then there's more risk for them they're gonna have to hold that stock for a little longer and so then they'll widen the bid ask spread so maybe it'll, it'll be at 1040 the ask price will be at 1040 the bid price will be at 960 right so trading volume the higher volume of a stock that's being traded, the more popular it is, the tighter that bid ask spread is gonna be, the smaller it's gonna be. And then another factor is overall market risk, overall market volatility. So let's say something crazy happens in the world and there's a lot of uncertainty in the market, then the market maker is going to widen that bid ask spread because there's more risk, they don't know what's gonna happen in the next maybe five to 10 minutes, right? There may be a lot of price fluctuation, and so they'll widen the bid ask spread. Versus in a regular economy, everything's going okay, then they'll be willing to tighten up that bid ask spread because the market maker feels that there won't be as many price fluctuations. All right, so that's pretty much how it works. Um, investors always sell at the bid price, and they always buy at the ask price, and then the spread of that goes to the market maker, that's the transaction cost.